other considerations then, um, Northern Ireland to non-EU countries, they remain as they are at the minute, imports and exports. So customs brokers will file the relevant customs papers for you to affect those movements. It's important to note that Northern Ireland may benefit from free trade agreements negotiated by the rest of the UK in these instances. Uh, so that will need to be looked at depending on the announcements of any of the free trade agreements that are that are agreed with other other third countries there. That may affect the obviously the the, the, uh, the additional custom duty that may, may be applicable. Goods imported into Northern Ireland from these non-EU countries will also be subject to this at risk test. So that at risk test of onward movement into EU. So where they are at risk, potentially you're paying EU customs duty instead. Um, and there will be a mechanism for reclaiming that, that EU um, duty. Uh, but again, that, that mechanism has yet to be determined. And again, it, it's just for these movements, it's the ability to track and trace is, is really crucial in terms of that risk profile. So where you have the ability to track and trace your goods and prove that your goods remain in Northern Ireland, then again, that will be key to it claiming any EU duty back on those movements that are deemed at risk. Finally, then on to services, um, and this this can be quite complex. But generally, generally speaking, those VAT, VAT on services remain unchanged, and it, it's generally a regulatory or a market access concern um, for the for people in this space, and that that to some extent it is dependent on trade negotiations with both sides. I'll, I'll just recap. The, the current rules in terms of in terms of services where where there is a business to business transaction, generally speaking, the, the place of supply is where that business customer is located in that EU jurisdiction. And it is so you don't charge UK VAT on that, that supply with your EU customer accounting for that local VAT on receipt of that service. On the B to C, B to private customers, business to private customer transactions. Generally speaking, the place of supply would be the UK if you're a UK supplier, and UK VAT would would be chargeable on those on those transactions. There are, of course, certain exceptions to the rules, such as land related services, which are taxed according to where the land is located, or admission to events, which again taxed where the event takes place. So those those should continue. As as they are the, the, those rules, there are certain there are certain things that may change, and indeed we'll we'll get to those in a minute. But it's important to note that obviously Northern Ireland will follow EU VAT rules on goods, but follow UK rules on services. So there potentially is a divergence in between rules here if you are involved in goods and services. Where we are seeing changes um, next year. Is in is in two spaces, um, and that's that's firstly the use and enjoyment, uh, and secondly digitised services. So if I take use and enjoyment rules first, so use and enjoyment affects certain electronic or downloadable services such as website hosting, software updates, broadcast, distance teaching, etc., etc., in a B two B transaction flow. So to, between two business customers. The use and enjoyment provisions at the minute only impact where there's a known EU party. But because come 1st of January 2021, we will be, or the UK will be a known EU party for services purposes, we need to understand then where our services, the website hosting software broadcast, where they're used and enjoyed. So in the example, it, we're, we're, we're providing a service to an Italian uh, customer, Italian business customer. Um, but ultimately, those services are used and enjoyed, say, in, in Spain and other EU jurisdictions. We have to look at where those services are used and enjoyed and where that customer is not registered in those countries where the services are ultimately used and enjoyed, potentially then for triggering overseas EU VAT registration requirements. Um, this can be a difficult space to determine 
or you guys supplying those services into the, the customers where ultimately those services are used and enjoyed because it will be your, your customer that will have that information in terms of say IP addresses and, and things like that on a lot of these a lot of these services and it can be difficult to understand. And so what we're saying to, to businesses caught in this space is have those conversations with your customers to understand where effectively those services are, are used and enjoyed as best you can and obtain some form of legal agreement to, to say where, where those are where those are enjoyed because you can then trigger overseas VAT registrations in, in these in these territories. I appreciate this is a it's a very technical point and I'm happy to, to take this up um, offline and there will be other events that Zamri will, will touch on with Invest Northern Ireland that we can we can pick up on, on a one-to-one -one basis. The other impact is on digitized services in the B2C space. So if you're providing digitized services to private individuals in the EU, um, again, the, the action point is that the place of supply is the EU jurisdiction in which that private individual is. Um, you will have to register for a MOS return in another EU jurisdiction to remit those taxes. So that, that's the action for those businesses um, come 1st of January 2021 in that space. Another and final benefit is for those that incur overseas VAT. Um, Northern Ireland businesses should be able to um, allow for the EU VAT refund scheme. Um, they should have access for that, which is essentially filing a claim with HMRC and HMRC will then forward on that claim to wherever you have incurred the VAT to seek a refund. And that is the distinction between Northern Ireland business, that's a, that's a benefit according, and, and, and GB uh, businesses, which will have to file directly with those with those EU countries under a separate uh, mechanism to allow for the, the recovery of that VAT on, on that overseas VAT 